What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you... Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Friday edition of Sin's Chat Corner. I am very excited to see that Angelo finally made it on the line here, so let me get right to him with the interview. Hello. Hello, Angelo. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I was trying to message you and let you know that you called in just a little bit early, so I finally was able to log in real quick and get you on the line. <laughs> so sorry about that. Oh, race. okay. Great, great, I apologize. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, good. Well, you were my very first London guest, so thank you so much for being able to figure out how to call in to me. I appreciate it. I'm very excited because I haven't yeah. done a U.K. person as of yet. So what time is it over there right now? Um, well, I'm, I'm actually in Cyprus at the moment um, doing a little promotional tour. So it's actually um, it's, it's 9 o'clock in Cyprus at the moment. I think it's about 7 p.m. in England. Okay. So uh, okay. I've had to tell all my friends and family to listen on at 7. It's kind of confusing, to ah. be honest, but... I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure it probably is. It was a little confusing for me, too, because your time zone is different, and it's very different. But I want to say thank you for coming back, because I know the other day we had some problems, so I appreciate you taking the time to do this. <laughs> well, you know us musicians, man. We can't do anything right, so... Oh, my God. Let me tell you, I'm surrounded by musicians. They're my best friends, so I'm like, oh, my God, I totally get this. So I have a bunch of questions for you, so I'm going to kind of delve right into it. Um, first, I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to inquire about your initial commencement into music. Um Tell us a little bit about how you got into things. Was this something you started as a child and, and got a passion for? How did that happen? Um, well, okay. Um, I think um, I got started, uh, I mean, I think back when I was about eight. Um, I think I was in Canada at the time, and um, I think that's close to you. But um, I was in Canada at the time, and um, I was at camp because uh, my, my parents put me in this camp for a month every summer. And um, I heard a, a song by Bon Jovi, you know, The Living on a Prayer, and that just got to me so much, that, that, that song. And um, I, I, I fell in love with music after that, you know, and I was, I was like, hold on, is this music? Is this what, <laughs> is this what everyone's talking about? And I, was, um, I, I got hooked, and I got, I got back home, which I was, and uh, I said to my stepdad at the time, I went, like, what's this song? Uh, it kind of goes something like this. And uh, he was like, oh, that's the one I pray about Bon Jovi. And um, I just kind of got hooked and picked up the guitar and started learning. And lucky enough, my mum, you know, gave me uh, guitar lessons. And I'd go every week and to these guitar lessons. And I'd, I'd you know, it was frustrating at the time. But uh, I got through it and I started learning to, you know, to, to play. And I think I just grew a passion out of that. And I, I think really? I kind of got started, really. Okay, and was it your own, was music your only passion? I mean, did you consider doing other things? Or was um, that I, think, I think, yeah, it, it was it was my only passion. I I mean, like I kind of you know saying throwing all my you know uh, chips on one roulette wheel. I think I, I think I put uh, it was always going to be my passion. I think I've never ever really kind of looked at anything else. Um, you know, I think being me, I, I'm very. Um, I have to I have to really show my emotions out, and it's it's the only best way I can do that is through music, and I think it's really been a releasement for me, um, and I'm I've 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 been blessed I think um, in in so many ways to have picked up music, and I think I'm I'm great. That's the only thing, you know. I'm, I'm I hope to think that is the only thing for me because it seems that way. So okay. yeah. Uh, now, I beg to ask the question, of course, because I know you had said about around age 12. Now, do you think at that point, were you actually able to define your attributes? Were you able to be able to say, you know what, I'm really good at this? Or were you just kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this? Was there uncertainty because you were so young? Uh, um, I think uh, I was always a, kind of a, the, the noisy guy in um, in my class. And um, I was always the, the person that, you know, kind of... Uh, Stood out, I guess, you know, and uh, coming from other people. My mum always kind of saw me as an entertainer. I used always to dance around in the house some, you know, and, and do silly things and be the one that, I, you know, kind of grabbing the attention from everyone. I think um, that's just the person that I was always going to be. So I think in terms of, I think, I, you know, as soon as I picked up the guitar, I knew. I kind of knew that this was it. Um, and I kind of never really looked back, really. I just went straight for it. So, um 
I think, I, yeah, I think it's the only only attribute that I have in my life. I mean, you know, I've been blessed with a voice. I mean, I, I, I you know, I'm, I don't take that for granted at all. You know, so um, and this and the songwriting as well. I've, you know, I don't know um, where the, you know my songwriting came from, but I, I was able to just songwrite from 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 a place deep within me. You know, out of nowhere. So I, mean, I was very blessed with that. Now, did you find early on that you were influenced by particular artists, whether it's in the UK or in, or in the United States? Who was influenced yeah. you early on? Who, who was in England? Uh, who was an influence to you? I'm sorry, early on. Oh, as far as obviously I you mean, mentioned Bon Jovi, like, but yeah. Um, um, to be honest, okay, folks. It would appear as though, unfortunately, we have lost Angelo again. Um, I was so hoping that this wasn't going to happen. Um, just a few notes to the listeners while we are waiting for Angelo to come back on. Just so you know, when the end of this particular live episode goes on, this will become an archived episode, so any individuals in England or otherwise who might want to listen at another given point in time can come back to the Sin Chat Corner Show page on Blog Talk Radio, and you will get an opportunity to be able to click on here and take a look at the interview at any point in time, whether it's today, tomorrow, next month, next year. Certainly, we usually try to do musicians one day a week, we do charities one day a week, and then we usually have our celebrity interviews, a lot of which is reality television, Hollywood stars, we're pretty much open as it relates to just about anybody across the board. So certainly I'm always looking for suggestions of, for artists that we're going to have on our show or individuals who you think might be a good candidate that have a great business. Um, we're certainly looking into the possibility of doing Skype interviews where everybody gets a chance to actually see the individual that I'm going to be interviewing. So it really becomes quite a neat experience for all individuals that participate. So certainly, um, in case I haven't mentioned it to you, there's various ways to get a hold of me. I have a regular email address, which is cin4251 at gmail.com. I have the show page, obviously. I have a Facebook page, not only for my personal self, but in addition to which, also for the show page, which is ideally, of course, Sin's Chat Corner. So we also have that as well. Um, and just as a side note to mention, uh, for next week, we're going to be having one of the Real Housewives of New York, who's a dear friend of mine um, from the show. She's been on before, Aviva Drescher. She's from the New York franchise. She'll be gracing us with her presence, and I believe that is next week on the 23rd. We're also going to be having another fine country musician, uh, courtesy of my publicist friend, Michael Stover. He is with MTS Management. Uh, if any of you are interested in looking him up, he does a lot of country talent, and that's across the board, United States and otherwise. Definitely always a pleasure to be dealing with him. And then, of course, we are going to be having a charity on, which is the One Step Foundation. So let me go back to Angelo. It looks like he's back on the line again. Yeah. I don't and know what else? happened there. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, goodness. You're back. Okay. You were talking to us about influences musically. Yes. Um, yes. Anybody uh, yes, besides so yeah, um, I, I think Bon Jovi was, um, like I said, I think back in that back in when I was that age, I was very uh, uh, one-minded. Uh, my tunnel vision drove me, and I, I kind of looked at one band and I said, you know, that's what I want to be. And I kind of remember listening to it and I said, you know, this is what I want to be. So um, I think when I was young, I was very one-minded, and I grew older, and I started to uh, look at other bands for influence. Um, I mean, there, there, there are a couple. I mean, you know, you have the ACDCs and the Led Zeppelins and, uh, you know, uh, Guns N' Roses. Oh, I, I think the L.A. rock kind of scene, you know, suits me very well, you know, and the Eagles especially. Um, and that's, yeah, big, big, big influences, the Eagles, for me. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Okay. Now, I know that in the year 2011, that marked your graduation from Louis Sham College, which is a Southeast London further education experience for you. Can you yeah. detail to the audience, what elements of your schooling do you think best aided you as far as your musical endeavors? What did you take away from that experience that helped you? Oh, oh, well, I mean, um, I think, I'm really happy you asked me that, but um, I think Lewisham College brought me a lot um, I mean, more more than I can ever say, really. I mean, it, uh, I mean, I think most important of all, uh, well, actually, no, I'll leave the most important to the end. But um, I think um, it brought me. It didn't necessarily make me learn about uh, about like how to play music as such. You know, it, it didn't make me learn how to do scales or how to how to you know read music. It never. I was never interested in that. I don't know why I, I never was, but I wasn't. But what it really brought out of me was 
my feeling to music because I've realised that you know it's not about how I can read music or how these people can read music. It's about how you feel music, and that's what I took away from it. And um, it, I think that was one of the biggest things I could look back and look at Lewisham College and say that that's what it gave me, you know, because, I mean, I came out with, you know, very good grades at the end of the day. And I think um, it was just the fact that I was I, I learned how to feel music. I didn't necessarily learn a lot how to read and stuff, but I think the most important thing, um, I, I found my biggest influence, and that's um, my, my, I mean, my, my fiance, my my girlfriend, I've been with now for two years, and I think she's. I met her at Lewisham College. She's she's also a singer, an amazing, talented, young, amazing singer, and she she gives me inspiration every day, um, and that's what I'd say. You know, I got out of that college the most. You know, but um, no, I yeah. Um, I have a question relative to that, because a lot of the musicians lately I've interviewed don't really have formal training, and I guess I'd ask you, because you've gone through college, do you think there is more of a benefit in having that education behind you? Yeah, I, I mean, it depends on all what you want to do. You know, I think it's it's about um, if you want to go down the road of university, um, start going to university to do it in professionally, if you want to be a session musician, if you want to, you know, uh, work with... Uh, well-known musicians then yeah it's something that you can do because that's that's what session musician is you know you get called in and you have to learn a bit of music in less than five seconds uh if i mean vocally i've had no training ever um so i mean I, like i think i was again i was very lucky to come out of my life and and be and and just have a voice that i can work with um but I've never really had vocal training. Um, I've just I've I've just seen how it works, and I just kind of try it, <laughs> you know. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so it, it's it's for different people, you know. Like it, it depends what sort of musician you want to be, I think. Okay. Now, do you think that at some point yeah. in time you might pursue? Are you going to toss around the idea of pursuing further education relative to music? Sorry, say that again. Oh, that's okay. Do you think at some point in time you might pursue further education relative to music? No. No, no I think I've made my decision <laughs> in what I want to do. And oh. I'm, I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, okay. I mean, this is it's not, you know, I, I, from, from, from an early age, you know, I, I went through school, you know, wearing my sunglasses on. You know, I mean, talk about, you know, the whole rock and roll <laughs> thing and being big. <laughs> you know, I kind of did that. I was that sort of person. I, I, you might look at it back now and it's like kind of the romantic version of of this world but it's, it's it's what i wanted to do you know and it, i might have been a bit too big for my own shoes but i tried it and um and and i think if you, if you dress like that and you have the mentality that you're going to be this person and the person you want to be i think you you create the energy around you to to eventually make it happen for you and i think um i did that very subconsciously i didn't mean to do that but um yeah i just you know, going to school with my leather jacket on and my sunglasses, get told off, and oh you know, I didn't care. But that's that's all I wanted to do. You know, so wow, that's amazing that you have that passion for it. That you're like, I'm definitive. I know exactly what I want. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I, cool. I mean, I think there's there's. I mean, I couldn't have. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's been a lot of ups and downs. You know, there's always a point in your life where you kind of go, aha, okay, you know what, there's only so much you can do before you have to go, right, is this going to actually work or is it, you know, but I've got some of the, I mean, I've got the best family I could ever ask for, you know, behind me. I think I, I can't, I mean, I'll probably even get emotional if I was to speak about it now, but I've got Aww. some of the best people behind me and, and I, like mention again, my my girlfriend is one of the biggest inspirations I have, and I, I couldn't have done anything without her. Um, you know, because before I went into college, I was in a band uh, called The Difference Between, um, and, and I was fronting that band, and I was very lost within myself in, one to, in what I wanted to be. Um, I didn't know whether I wanted to be a musician. I did, you know, I was very confused, and I, I went to the college <clears throat> in 2011, <clears throat> and I met her. And uh, she completely turned my life around, and she really pointed me in the direction where I wanted to go. So I had a lot of help. Um, so it wasn't just me. It wasn't all me. And I would actually give a lot of it to her because she, she kind of finalized it for me. So, um, you know, and, I, and if she's listening now, I just want to say that I, I'm very appreciative of that. And I love her very much. Oh, sweet. That's wonderful. Amazing. Okay, for those that don't know, you're both a songwriter as well as a musician. Obviously, your genre of choice is country rock. Um, if yeah. I were to ask you, what do you feel is your strongest skill? Meaning, 
songwriters compared to musicians. Okay. All right. So, so what? So you you asking if if I'm I'm a, like a stronger musician than a songwriter? I would say, which in your mind do you feel your strongest at? Okay. All right. Um. <clears throat> wow. I think when it comes to to being successful in this field, there's no leeway in being a better musician than a songwriter. I think you have to have it both in you. I think you have to find the passion in songwriting when you're by yourself sitting in a room by yourself you know you've got no inspiration around you whatsoever apart from your guitar and you have to come up with something that is from within you because I think when you write a song that comes from deep within you um, it, you're bound to hit you know at least one other person in this world you know because music transcends M music is a very it's the biggest language in the world and I think you have to have a big skill to do that um, but then just to have that you know, you can't then go onto the stage and not be able to pull off the song you've written. You have to be an entertainer as well. And I think, um, in my opinion, I mean, I would hope that I'm, I'm very dissimilar, you know, because I'll, I'll spend a lot of time writing my songs and I'll spend a lot of time getting my, getting my band together and making sure that it all works out live, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be there telling my band exactly what I want to do, exactly what I want them to say, exactly what I want them to play. And uh, I'll make sure that, uh, you know, being a live performer, I'll, I want to get the songs that I write across to thousands of people uh, in the best way I can. So I think um, I'd say, I'd say I think I'm, I'm, I'm not really any any better than, than the other, really. I think I, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd hope to say that I'm the same. I gotcha. Okay. Do you think um, you could describe for us some of the various elements that provide you inspiration behind your songs? various elements um i would say uh, let me see i think i think um you have to have uh, you have to take the good things out of your life every every good thing that has happened in your life you just write about it and i know that there's people out there that that um that look up, look upon life in a negative way and i think basically the best way to to get to, to to you know get the the material to write these good songs that you you know that you want people to hear is just taking things from your life and make them good because you know there's always a bit of good in every part of life and um also having people around you to give you inspiration i think going uh, to place different places that you've never been to before um but i think most important i think it just comes from within you i just it, it's it's so hard to explain uh, when you when you write from somewhere really deep inside, you actually you get lost in yourself. And I think when you yeah. get lost in your people get lost in you. And I think that's um, something in songwriting and life. Uh, but I think it's it's finding that deep within peace within you um, to be able to just write from your heart. I think that's that's the most important thing. That's the most important material integral part of songwriting. I gotcha. Now I'm curious to ask this question. Um, would you consider country music, like today's country music, to be melancholy? And what I mean by that is, you know, there's a tendency with country to be very sad, very dismal. Would you concur uh, okay. with that, do you think? No, no, of course not. I think, you know, there's every sort of music has its um, has its emotional changes. You know, I mean, it's not country music has its has its sad flows and it has its emotional sides. But then you get country music that is very upbeat and very country road, you know, sort of like um looking forward in life kind of thing you know and it's like i mean i honestly i personally grasp the inspirational side of it and and kind of getting off your knees and and kind of living in life you know but uh, i think i understand why people find country music very sad but i've not, i've actually never thought of that in in that way um i i would have normally thought that um sort of like more Jazzy soulful is 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 near into all of that kind of sad thing, but you know I think everyone has their opinions, and I think that's the magic thing about music, is that everyone sure. has their own opinions. Of course, I agree with you there. Um, do you think that you have you, or will you ever compose for other musicians? Will you write material for them? Um, I mean, me, um, I'm, like I think I've never I've never wrote, written a song for for anyone else, but um, I've me um, I. I I've 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 collaborated a lot with my with my girlfriend and we we you know like our ideas are constantly flipped you know from one side of the room to the other you know and uh, she'll she I mean she's a brilliant songwriter as well and she'll you know sit there and she'll come up with these lyrics and then I'll come up with the guitar and I mean that that in that sort of respect um, yeah I, I'll 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 help and and write and and you know do my part for other people but I, I don't I've, I've never ever written a song especially from someone else you know I've got songs. 
um, I've I've written for myself back in the day, and I've given it to gave I gave a couple songs to to my girlfriend for her to do because they suit her, suit her much more much more. But no one else, no, no, no one else. I, I don't. I find that when I write a song, it's very personal to me, and no one else can uh, in, have a right, um, so to speak, to, to sing it. You know, not not sounding like um, you know big-headed or anything, but it's, it's very personal. So um, only like uh, people that I'd kind of find able to sing the songs that I've written, I would give to. But only my girlfriend so far. Gotcha. I understand. Now. I'm told that you wish to exemplify a particular message of peace, love, and the power of we throughout yeah. your lyrics. Yes. Um, can you explain yeah. to me how you feel you've accomplished that goal um, in the music that you've done so far? Um, I'm, my, the songs that I write, um, they're very... Uh, it's, it's a very... Again, it's a very romantic version of this world that we live in today, but, you know, someone's got to spread that optimism around. And I feel like singing about things, you know, like um, picking up your life and uh, kind of just going for it, do whatever you want to do. You know, that like with I'm Coming Home Tonight, the single, um, I wrote that when I was 13 or 14, and I wrote it back then. I literally wrote it for coming home from work, you know, and um, I don't know if you've heard it, um, but the lyrics say, you know, I'm coming home tonight, it's the last time um, that I'll be, you know, coming from work, you know, and I wrote it literally saying I'm going to come home from work because I was tired of work, I was 14, I didn't want to work anymore, you know, even this is my first day of work, I was already bored of it, being a musician, I didn't want to do anything, I said, you know, I don't want to go to work again, I just want to go home and that'll be the last time, but I'll be all right. And uh, a couple months ago, before I released it with uh, my, my label, um, people said, you know, to me, like, you know, this song makes me want to come home to to myself. Uh, it's not it's not about physically coming home. It's about me coming home to myself and me realizing who I am. Or and I had someone else say, no, I, I'm going to come home to my family, um, come home to this certain situation in my life, and it, it really started to you know, open so many eyes and I want I want people to understand that people have second chances in life, you know, and when I say second chance, I mean third and fourth and fifth and sixth, you know, because life is not about, you know, who's wrong and who's right, you know, it's about living and people should uh, understand that and um, I just want to give that message out to, to everyone out there to, to make them understand that life is all good, you know, there's, there's never a, a wrong side in life because everything that happens is meant to be and people should just take it and, uh, Keep moving forward. Excellent. But I've, got, yeah, excellent. I've got a lot of songs, um, a lot of songs that you know that uh, aren't released yet as of yet because I've got an EP coming out in March, I think right. February or March. Uh, but I've got a lot of songs underneath my belt that I've written, you know, for the past, God, for the past uh, eight, nine years that I hope will spread the optimism around. And you know, the power of we, the collection of we, uh, you know, when we have. Our, all our thoughts put together, I think we can do anything we want. And uh, you can you can tell that with Hurricane, you know, was it Hurricane Sandy that hit uh, uh, New York? You know, like yep. as soon as that hit, you had people there acting together as we, you know, and, and we can do it as a, as people, as as a, as a collective group. We can we can help each other out. You know, we don't need to be fighting because at the end of the day, we are in this one world. So we just have to count ourselves as we. You know, not not no that guy over there no it's not about that so that's why I want to kind of try and get across and that's an amazing message actually I, I'm very impressed by that actually for such a young gentleman to have such a wonderful <coughs> as it's relative to things kudos to you man that's, that's absolutely awesome were you satisfied you with the with the sound that you produced off this last song I mean were you like yeah I hit it right on the meaning is great the sound's great were you satisfied with your product <sighs> Oh, well, to be honest, the single that um, I mean, where I'm recording at the moment is uh, it's just in my, you know, my back garden. Really, um, we've got, you know, just a, a computer there with with all the software, and I mean, I, to, I'm very, very, very surprised in how it's turned out in terms of like how how professional it sounds because it's really not in a in a very, you know, uh, industry style studio. <clears throat> um, but I think I could do if if I was given an opportunity to go into a, a bigger studio into you know with a proper producer because I was producing all my stuff as well I produced everything that you'll probably hear for the next year or so but um I think I'm very proud of what is what I've 
accomplished and again inspiration from people around me um, but I think I could do better if I was given the opportunity to go into a studio I think I could do um, a lot better and get a nicer sound because um, I feel I'm very limited at the moment in what I can do but all things can change you know Definitely, and you've got plenty of time to do that because you're just a young man, not an old man. For those of you who don't know, Angelo is a very young musician, which I don't get off either. Everybody I know is old like me, so we're all very young. <laughs> so this is refreshing. Oh, uh, age, is, age is just a number. Always remember that. It's just a number. It is, definitely. Now, I want to talk a minute. Um, I know your current label is um, Freaky Pug Records, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, how did you make the determination to embark on that partnership with them? Well, this, um, I mean, this whole Twitter thing, it was, it was all based on Twitter, and um, I, I had gotten used to Twitter, and I was tweeting, you know, about stuff, and just getting used to it, and, um, you know, I was kind of tweeting a lot of record labels, um, not necessarily tweeting, just adding them, um, and, and, and I, I came across this, this uh, I think it was like a promotional company called, uh, called Brit Rock Army, and they, they, they deal with a lot um, of big gigs in central England. And uh, they 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 posted something up on the internet saying you know um, send in your songs and because we're creating a a CD full of like the best of unsigned British rocks so I, you know I said okay you know I might as well try I'm you know nothing to lose and I sent it and it got picked to be on the CD out of you know thousands of whatever of songs and mm -hmm. um, then the, the that that promotional company was linked to Freaky Pug Records. Uh, and I, I got in talking with them, and I said, you know, like, um, so, so what are you guys about? And they were explaining to me, and they, they showed their interest, and I showed mine. And uh, we got speaking, and then, you know, I think it was only a couple of days after, and it's, it, it suited perfectly, you know, and then they're uh, one of the best indie uh, record labels in, in, in England, I would say, to, to, really? to for, from a starting out musician. I think they've, they're doing a lot to help me out, you know, so... Uh, that's how it kind of came about, really, through, through the promotional uh, company, and uh, it just kind of happened out of nowhere, really. Yeah, I was going to say, and just ironically, just let everybody know, I found Angela on Twitter myself. <laughs> I didn't know who you yeah, were. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I remember, you yeah, you just tweeted me, and I was like, yes, okay. Exactly. It worked out really well, I have to say. Um, do you think that um, the decision to go with them has been career-changing for you? Oh, uh, definitely. I think I think um, any any... Um, I think I would say this bit of advice for musicians, I mean, I, I, I can only offer the advice I've kind of picked up during my small, small, tiny career at the moment, but I would say in a career, it, it could be any career, um, there's always going to be mountains, and uh, you can never get to the top of the mountain and think that you are at the top of your life, because if you do, you'll never be able to speak to yourself in a good 10 years' time because you'll be so much further away, you'll never get anywhere else. And as soon as you climb that mountain, you have to climb back down and climb the next taller mountain, you know, and that's how I find, you know, life in general, not just a music career, not just a banking career, not just any sort of career, but there's always going to be another mountain. And uh, you can never stop at the first mountain. You have to climb down and walk up the next tall one. I think with Ricky Pug Records, what they are, they are my first major mountain that I've reached at the top. And they are the thing that I found at the top of that mountain. And now I have to think to myself, right, okay, I'm here. I've got the opportunity to get my music out and the opportunity to listen, to make people listen to my music. And they're there to do that for me. And after that's happened, I'm going to have to, you know, obviously find a way to then get myself... In a, in a wider perspective of people, and I can't just do that by staying, by staying, you know, like in one place. I have to go and go and search. So I think I think in terms of career changing, they are the first step of my career. So yeah, they they they're, they're the people that will start my career. Wonderful. Now, uh, yeah. for those that don't know, obviously December came around, and that was the launching of "I'm Coming Home Tonight," which is your song, of course. Um, yeah. Maybe describe to the listeners how that experience existed, like when you had this big launch party. How did that help in terms of molding your, oh. your path as it relates to music? Um, well, um, I mean, when I released it, it, I mean, it wasn't anything. I mean, to be honest, I, for me, it's probably the most special um, release of, of anything I've ever done in my life. I didn't have a major party. It was just 
again, you're probably going to hear my girlfriend a lot of times in, in this conversation, but it was just me and me and my girlfriend in, in, in our shed, and uh, she said, look, listen, uh, just burn it on the CD, and we'll listen to it on the, on the CD player quickly before you send it to, to the record label so they can release it. And we'd had a, we had a little, um, you know, listen in, in the shed, and we were just there, you know, by ourselves, and it was, it was the most special thing because, you know, she, she uh, showed her... Um, confidence in me and I felt very proud of myself and very proud of her she felt very, very proud of me and that was uh, that was all I did really and um, but that was the most special thing I could have done I think from I think that's a, what I'm going to be doing it doesn't how doesn't matter how big I get or whatever I, I think I'm just going to stick it to very small meaningful things because I think they're the, they're the best things in life when it's just you know between a couple people sure I imagine so now I'm curious to ask you to tell us about the journey of how your song went from being just a mind blurb, if you will, to becoming um, an actual real song that people like and listen to. Yeah, well, um, I because I wrote this that uh, I'm coming home tonight when I was about 13, 14, like I said, and uh, it was at the time I was in a uh, I was in a band called The Difference Between, and and I, I wrote it whilst being in that band, and they we kind of arranged it. Me being the singer songwriter guitarist at the time, uh, I had obviously all the structure down, uh, what I wanted to write. The second verse, actually, funny enough, uh, I co-wrote with my bass player at the time of of, of the band, um, but it was. Uh, it was kind of very straightforward, the song. I think I've got a very simple way of writing my songs. It's normally, you know, verse, uh, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, and then chorus. Um, because I just find, you know, it's, it, you don't have to do anything special. You just need to have a good meaning in it, and hopefully it will catch on. But um, in terms of musically, I just I just kind of go with it. You know, I just feel it. I don't really think about it too much. <laughs> I gotcha. And do you have a particular process? Like, I'm a writer, so of course I have to have certain elements, certain pens, certain book, that sort of stuff. Do you have any niches that you need to produce? Uh, um, I have to play with, um, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious, but I have to play with my guitar, uh, my acoustic guitar. Um, it can't be anyone else's, because then I kind of start to panic. Oh. Um, I have to, uh, I, do, I do have a couple of things. I have to... Basically, I have to make sure that, you know, people around me are, are, are happy first before I play. Because if people aren't happy, then I can't play because I don't, I feel, you know, I feel like uh, I just can't, I can't, I can't do things when people are, are sad for some reason. I feel wow. like uh, that's part of me gone. Um, and um, I feel, yeah, I don't, I don't have any kind of, if I, if I don't have that pen, no, it's, it's, it's um, I think to be, to be a, a very classified musician and a very liked you know, uh, working musician, you need to kind of be very easy going, you know, and not have many demands because people kind of attract, uh, are attracted more to that than if you, you know, if you're kind of saying, oh, I can't do that without this. And But I think just making people happy is, is uh, what, I, what I'd like to do before I play, or else I can't play. <laughs> sure. No, that makes perfect sense, actually. Do you find as a musician it's difficult for you... Um, if you do happen to do like switching of tempos or tones within the course of a song, is that hard for you to have range? Switching the what? Sorry. Switching meaning as far as the tones. Like let's say for instance, I know on your particular song, I know you solo right in the middle. As I recall. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's that's yeah, that's that was my call. That I I have to have a solo in my in my songs. Have to, have to, have to, have to. I'm I'm, I'm you know being a fan of Bon Jovi. Uh, you know, Richard Sambor is a big inspiration of mine. So uh, I listen to him, and I, you know, especially his solo albums as well. And I'm like, wow, you know, I want, I want some of that in my, in my songs. So, yeah, I always have to have a solo in my songs. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. If it doesn't fit, then I won't have it in. But if it does, and I, I can do it, I'll, I'll do it. And, uh, and you'll hear on, on the EP, it's a very rock-based, uh, guitar-based album. You'll, you'll hear a lot more solos. Yeah. I was just going to get to that, in fact, because I know that the release of uh, First Words is um, penciled off for either yes. February or early March. Um, yes. I wanted to ask about that a minute. Is this particular music that we're going to find on here, is it relatively similar to the first piece that you've done, or are you going on a, on a different century? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very, very similar. Um, I think with I'm Coming On Tonight, it's much more... I wouldn't say it's much more commercial, but it's just very much more uh, simple. Uh, the other songs that are on, on the EP are going to be uh, very guitar orientated, so it's going to hopefully attract more guitarists to kind of learn and to kind of listen to. Uh, Message-wise, um, 
very people that that listen to songs in depth. Um, but in terms of uh, is, it, is it sounding the same as I'm coming on tonight? No, it's, it's, I think it's going to be very um, vivid and very very kind of uh, mixed, very varied. I think, which I hope okay. you know. I gotcha. And of course, the on the EP, how much music is going to be on there exactly? There's going to be four tracks on on the EP, okay. but there will be that's that's just kind of a warm up thing that I want to do. I want to. There's going to be an album that will be hopefully released at the end of this year. Um, I've got a good 12 songs that I've picked already that that um, will be recorded professionally uh, with my full band, and uh, that will be you know released hopefully by the end of this year. But that's that's going to be some really nice country stuff, proper down to you know my roots again, and and you're going to hear some proper country rock coming from me. I gotcha. And then um, when individuals want to look for this, um, I'm assuming you're going to have a launch party for a launching of this, if you will. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I'll, 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 you know, I mean, I'll see what I can do. But I think, like I said, I mean, what, what's most important to me is just, uh, you know, it's, it's not about the kind of big parties and and things like that. I mean, I just want to spend the time that I can to to celebrate with my family. You know, my son and my my girlfriend, and that's. That's the most important thing to me, I think. Um, if, if it wasn't for that, if I didn't have that in my life, I think music wouldn't really be anything to me, you know, because I can't, you know, sharing it with them is, is the most is the most beautiful thing. So I think it doesn't matter how big the album does or how many millions of albums I sell or, you know, how many shows I sell out, I'm always going to come back home to, to, to them, I think. Because I'm, yeah, I don't think I'm not the kind of, you know, that rock star, that the, the image of rock star, you know. I don't think I kind right. of fall into that category. I just kind of do the music and hope that people listen. That's an amazing attitude. I am so impressed. I am really, really <laughs> impressed. I am. Um, yeah, no, I am I mean, now. I've got. Yeah, huh? I mean, I've got. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, 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 you know, I've got a big opportunities coming up. My, my label, um, they're trying to get me to open up for Bon Jovi in, in June. I think it is. They're coming over to England. Um, so if I could be opening up for them, then that would be, that would be something, you know. Off the, off the record, you know, that would be absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, again, the celebration wouldn't be that big. I think, you know, my band, I'll let my band do whatever they want to do, but me, I'm just going to be, I'm going to go back to my family and just, just be there. That's wonderful. And uh, at that point in time, when it comes out February, March, how are people going to be able to find it? So it will be on iTunes. It will be um, on, on, I think, it's a, a, a around 250 different sites that you can buy it on. Uh, my record label site, freakypugrecords.com, uh, well, I think it's .co.uk actually, uh, and just go on artists and I'm there and I have all my discography. You can have it on my website. Uh, if you type in Angelo Tristan on Google, uh, it will just come, everything will come up, you know, like uh, the um, different sites where you can buy my music. Um, it's, I think it's going to be very easy. You can find it on all the major stores, HMV online, uh, but the main one I think is iTunes. I think that that would be the, the best one to go with. Gotcha. Okay, wonderful. Now, I find it interesting to inquire, uh, maybe to ask about your prior band experiences, meaning um, have you played with other individuals? Yeah, um, I mean that was that was a really tough time uh, for me in my life. Uh, I was uh, being very. I think I, I, as a person, I'm very kind. I want to do what, what everyone else wants to do. I want to make. I want to please everyone. Um, and I think my band that, that kind of took a bit for granted really and I kind of got taken the mick out of and I kind of you know looked down upon I looked like the the kind of you know loser of the band so to speak I can't and it kind of um I you know I can't I let that happen to myself really so it wasn't that good of an experience I just kind of kept with it because I thought that was going to go somewhere uh you know obviously having a dream you don't want to ever lose that dream and I think I just kind of let that get to me um but I found I found that then breaking up from the band, uh, I found there was a lot of uh, perks and, and uh, better things waiting for me. But I think the, the, the whole experience of that band, uh, I don't yeah, I don't really know what it brought out. It just brought a lot of uh, anger out of me, really. Okay. Now, do you feel that uh, in yeah. some ways? I, w- I was going to say, did that serve to maybe shape you as a performer? Did it, it alter you in some way? Oh well, to uh, the good, okay. to the bad. Yeah, when you say it, yeah, when you're saying that, well, I think I, I, in a way, I did become of a stronger person because now I realise that you can't let anyone else take, you know, your ground. You have to be very strong with what you want, uh, which is something that I didn't do in that band. I was very kind of, yeah, okay, let's do, let's do that, let's do that. Uh, but I've realised that I have to be very strong. But I think it did mould me as a as a performer, as a frontman, 
um, knowing my area, knowing my surroundings, um, I, I kind of understood how to move around the stage uh, because of them and they, they kind of did say oh, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that and um, I did it and I, I think I've, I've grown a natural kind of uh, awareness on the stage now because of that. So uh, I think that, yeah, so you know, I think some good has come of that. It's amazing. Wonderful that, that you can take a situation that's not ideal and formulate it into something that will be beneficial for you. That's amazing as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, you, yep. have, you have to do that with life. Yeah. Definitely. You have an incredible attitude. Um, has, <laughs> that, was that from your parents and your family slowly? I mean, is it just... No, uh, you know what? Incredible. It's not because my... I mean, it's funny enough, my my uh, my whole... Like, my dad left me when I was very, very, very young. Uh, I was... Uh, to be honest, probably too young to even remember. <clears throat> so I was very, lo- I was a lone child, and my mum, we, I was moving about constantly. Uh, my mum, uh, you know, would find like, you know, was finding it very hard to find a partner to, and had had a lot of divorces and stuff. So I had to go through a lot of things like that. Um, so I think I was never around. I was never um, stable. I was very, very always on the move. I was always very scared. I was always very. Um, just not yeah, just not very stable. <clears throat> so I don't know, I don't know where it came from. But um, I, I've always, for some reason, I've always found this hope of inspiration in me to to say that life is always good on the other side. You know, you can take a lot of good out of it. And you know, taking the good out of me not ever really knowing my dad is kind of just, you know, I, I write songs about that. So so that's that's where some of my inspiration comes from, and it, it makes it's it's make, making me able to give songs to other people that might be in the same situation as me, where they haven't had their dad, and, uh, and that's that's the good thing that's come out of that for me, because I make other people happy and I give people inspiration. So definitely, that's, uh, that's awesome. Now I want to ask you this question because I've asked other musicians about this, so I want to get your take on it. Obviously, here in the United States, we have the vehicles like American Idol and The Voice. Um, do they have similar things over in the UK? Yeah, well, I mean, you must have heard The X Factor. Yeah, oh, that's right, The X Factor. I totally forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, to be honest, my, my view on that, um, I mean, I think many people would disagree, many people would agree. I think, again, it's very mixed, but I think with The X Factor, it really ruins a big face of music. Um, I think it... They really try to manipulate the public into kind of loving someone uh, without their free will being involved. You know, I think it's it's very it's very one-sided. You know, I think they know the winner before the, the show has even started. You know, with all of these things. Uh, you know, I think American Idol is one of the most uh, is the the kind of one that is most. What's the word? It's, 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 it's the one that I think I believe in more because I see it and it's kind of like, okay, this, maybe this is a bit fair, but with the x factors and stuff, me personally, I, I say to people, never go on it because it will just really either, one, ruin your career or you'll have a career for about a year and then you'll just get faded away because that's what's happened to every single artist that's ever come out of these shows. You know, they'll have an album out and they'll get sold out for a year, but then you never hear of them afterwards, so... I gotcha. And, you know, I've heard that before, actually, and I do think sometimes people look at it in terms of it's a quick vehicle to get out there. You know, back in old country days, yeah. with Reba McIntyre, yeah. George Strait, they had to work their way up. And now it's kind of like you get on a show and then you get popular. Yeah, exactly, you know. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly, you know, back in back in 30 years ago, you had no platform to... To, to go out and be known by millions of people in one second, you know, you had to you had to work your chops, you had to play in bars, you had to play in clubs, you had to, you know, go to record labels personally and ask them. You had to do all of this, and and this would this would build your character up as a musician, uh, let alone as a person, you know. But with what's happening now, all of that is is gone. So you you get to the top, and you don't know what to do with all all of this success. So you kind of really break down. Sure, I imagine so. And then my other question being, of course, do you think that social media nowadays plays a big part in terms of a musician's career? I think media um, is is something that people. I think I think media media just looks for stories to kind of sell. I think, and um, they'll try and turn anything into, you know, into into something that it's not. Um, but I think what people should should do and I think this is in, in terms of not just media but when you're playing a, a show and you get feedback take everything as, as something as a positive and go right well they're speaking about me so I'm obviously doing something in this in this industry right because you know they're not <laughs> going to be speaking about me if, if not um, but I think um, 
when when I get to a point where thousands of people are, are, are know know my songs and that they take inspiration from my songs, you know, that's 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 more important to me than than the critics. So I think you should kind of really look at the media as something that they try and downgrade you and they try and make you look bad. But at the end of the day, they're they're the ones speaking about you and getting yourself known. And if you sure. if you don't get hurt by it, then no one else is going to get hurt by it because everyone's just seeing your name. So. Exactly. No. And uh, what do you think about the effect of social media? Do you think that that can make or break a musician oh, what, as well? Oh, do you, do, you, do you mean like Facebook and and Twitter and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's really helpful. I think people these days should really use the um, things that they have around them. I mean, like like this interview wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for Twitter. You know. Right. So I think um, I think social media has its big plot, part part to play. Uh, I think. Um, it, it does kind of, again, skip a bit of the important work that people had to do to become a musician. Uh, but I think, you know, we, we have to use the technology that we have around us, um, you know, so what's the point of wasting it? But I think in a good way. You know, people should use it in a good way. Not, not I think there's a lot of bad ways that it's happening, but oh, yeah. I, th Definitely. I think, I think in, in, in the overall perspective, I think it works. Definitely. And curiously, because I was listening to you earlier in the interview, do you think there'll come a point in time where you and your lady love will duet together? Well, yes. Oh, yes, of course. You might, I would never, ever, ever take a, a, a downgrading opportunity to, to uh, do it with her. I would, I, like, that's one of the biggest things I want to do. I think, um, you know, we probably have uh, this little kind of game that we're playing. Who, 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 gets, who goes, you know, who, get, who gets to what place first? But I think, you know, if, like if she if she gets to a very successful place, then I know that she'll drag me up there with her. And it's same with me. If I get to a very success, successful place, I'll, I'll drag her up with me. And, um, and we're always, we're, to be honest, we're probably always going to be doing duets. You know, you'll probably never stop hearing of us. Um, and that's that's just how it's going to be. But I think, you know, something like, you know, like Lady Antebellum and things like that, we're mm -hmm. very... Um, influenced by that and we do a cover of that me and her you can find that um i think uh is that on youtube i'm not sure if it's on youtube or, or soundcloud she's got a soundcloud uh naina de Oliveira, and she her i mean she like on her soundcloud there's so much stuff on there uh that we've done like little acoustic demos and stuff um but i would, I would oh, always or i'd always never pass down that opportunity sure certainly and uh, I'm wondering if I can ask this question because it'll break all the little girls' hearts of the younger women that are listening. Are you planning on getting married? Oh, man. Well, hey, I, I asked the question, what, mm, on my birthday, uh, my t my 20th birthday, I asked her to marry me. So, yeah, that was uh, a good year and a half ago. Oh. I was nine months into our relationship. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's wonderful. My goodness. Um Okay, so my last question for you is, talk to me regarding um, the fans that you have accomplished so far, who you have so far. If they want to meet you in person or see your work or have you perform, how would they be able to do that? Um, what, so, so, so if someone wanted to meet me in person, did you say? Right, right. Um, I mean, like, I'm, any opportunity I get to go to another country and play, I'll, I'll do it, I'll take it. Um, but for now, without the funds of that, being uh, hooked up onto a, an independent record label, um, I mean, it's flying over to England, really, to see me. That's the only really way at the moment you can come and see me. Um, but I'll, I'll be constantly, with this next, with the single out now and the EP getting released, I'll be constantly gigging around London. The, sh the videos will be posted up on YouTube, uh, on my website, so you can see it, you know, at home. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to do my best to come over to America because you guys are, you know, true inspiration to me with my music. You know, obviously uh, having the Eagles and Bon Jovi and things like that. You know, it all happens down your end. You know, so that's where I want to be. So we've me, me and my fiance, we, we've we've um, we've agreed that when whenever we have the opportunity, we're going to be coming over to America straight away. Yay! Oh my God, that's so exciting. I was going to ask you that, and I forgot to do that. Do you do you think that your opportunities are limited because of the fact of where you're located? Um, in fact, like many people would say that, many people would say my opportunities are very limited, but I would, again, be in just the, you know, uh, half half full kind of, you know, uh, optimism that I have. I think it's sure. kind of benefited me that, that I've, I'm in a place that actually doesn't do country music. I'm in London, I'm in England, that is very not country music orientated, and that's, uh, I do that constantly here. People aren't doing it very much here, so it's it's, it's kind of a very a very weird thing of a of a England-based 
singer to do country music. You don't very, you know, you don't come across it at all. So I think it's really in my benefit that that I'm doing it here because then, with the backing of England, I think I could then come over to America and hopefully get your blessing. You know, so sure. I think I think it's I think it's actually a very good opportunity that I'm starting here. I gotcha. Now I wanted to go yeah. through this rundown with you. Um, if you just listen to all this, let me know if I've missed anything here. Obviously, okay. your music is on iTunes, um, Amazon, yep. YouTube. Yep. Uh, yep. For those that don't know, you can follow Angelo on Twitter, which is at a Tristan, which is T R I S T A N Music. And then I know you're on Facebook, obviously, because we are friends, which is Angelo Tristan, of course. Have I missed anything? Yep. No, no. I mean, like just put in Angelo Tristan on Google, and you have thousands of stuff you know the first 20 pages is is uh you know about about stuff to do with what i'm doing so wonderful that's absolutely wonderful yeah. this is what i want to say to you angelo i think again you have such an amazing attitude and you you just you're a breath of fresh air because most musicians have kind of gotten burnt out have just got you. you know their their dreams of grandeur as it relates to money etc and you just you you are so yeah. on the ball for such a young man which is refreshing, and you adore your girlfriend, which I think is absolutely lovely. Um, I will tell you that I'm hoping that we stay in contact, because I have a project coming up that you could write music for, if you would entertain the idea. Okay. That's, yeah. I, I think mean, that would be you, awesome. You, you, yeah, I, I, would, I would always be up for anything, so you just let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll get onto that. That would definitely be wonderful, and certainly, please do not be a stranger. Once you go ahead and the new release comes out in a couple months, if you want to come back on the show again, you're more than welcome to come back and do it again. Oh, I'm I'm privileged to hear, hear you say that. I would I'd love to, absolutely love to. Oh, awesome! Because we like repeat visitors here, definitely. And just to let you know, if you want to let your fans know or friends know, this episode will, in about 20 minutes or so, become archived. So anybody, any point in time, forever, can go can back listen and listen to, to it anytime they want. Okay. I'm going to add in an audio of your song and put it to the show so that hopefully tomorrow it'll be oh, up well, with I the thought, song. I thought you wanted me to sing for a bit. I thought, I thought you wanted me to sing, you know, for, for a bit. I was ready to do a bit of acapella stuff. I, I, was, if you wanted I to... was just going to offer that because the last time I did that with Chelsea the other day, she got squeamish and she got embarrassed and she really was like, no, I don't <laughs> want to sing. If you'll sing for me, I will sit here and listen to you right now. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm tr- I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. All right. So what? Well, well, okay. Well, I'm going to do a bit of a song that I think is um is is close to uh, you. You probably know it being a Bon Jovi song, but I'm just going to go um and right. and, and start with a. Uh, you were born to be my baby. I was made to be your man. We got something to believe in. If we don't know where we stand, only God. Knows the reason, and he must have had a plan. Cause you were born to be my baby, and I was made to be your man. Yeah, so that's to my fiance right there. Oh, that was lovely. Oh my God, what a lucky gal. Goodness, I gotta find somebody in their 40s that does this kind of stuff. Let me tell you. That's amazing. You have uh, a everyone's clapping. Voice. I'm, I'm actually playing in Cyprus at the moment, I'm about to do a show. Hey, what's <laughs> I am uh, amazed. Oh, my God. Kudos to you, doll. That is amazing. You have got to come back to the show, and then this way we will have more to play. We'll have more to talk about. I'm very, very excited. I'm just so happy that I met you. I'm so happy I found thank you. Thank you. Thank Definitely. you so much. And we, we will chat off air about your endeavor. Hopefully you'll be able to help me out. Hopefully I'll be able to help you out. Just make sure you come yeah. back and visit us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll, I'll be there on the first flight, man. Don't worry. Oh, that would be amazing. All right, sweetheart, I'll let you get back to your stuff. You have yourself a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk soon. You too. Okay, All thank right, you very sure. much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for that, Angela Tristan. I have to say that I am just blown away. Um, it's been quite some time since I've had an opportunity to listen to a musician who has such fire and passion and true sincerity for the work that he does. He sounds like a very vibrant young man. Um, I just think him being in love resonates. And obviously, I do think that has something to do with the fact that he's so amazingly talented. So again, definitely, he's on Facebook. Go ahead and friend him or check him out. He's on Twitter. Again, that handle is at A Tristan Music. Uh, his music can be listened to on YouTube, Amazon, or iTunes, or I believe there's another place called E Music, which you can check that out. So I want to say thank you to everybody who has taken the time to listen to my show today. I always appreciate you taking moments out of your day to spend with me. Uh, For those of you who happen to be listening or in Milwaukee, please make it a point 
to stop on down to see my dear friend Craig Olmick. There's a bar in West, I think it's West Dallas, called Dops. He's going to be having an open jam this evening. And I have another friend of mine, Scotty Meisner, who's going to be playing down at Pottawatomie Bingo and Casino at 4 p.m. this afternoon. I'm a huge advocate for local music, so please go ahead and check my friends out. Make sure you go ahead and stop in. Uh, check my schedule over the weekend. I'll be posting up who I have for next week. We're looking at a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday showcase. So definitely make sure you check me out and you have yourself a wonderful weekend. What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.